Welcome to the lab number three of CE371. This short video will provide an overview of the laboratory procedures. I encourage you to follow along on the written procedures provided in your laboratory manual. During the video, additional detail will be provided beyond the content in your laboratory manual. Remember, there will be a quiz regarding these procedures at the start of the lab period. Lab number three is the modified proctor test. These lab procedure instructions outline the method for conducting the modified Proctor test. Test data from the Proctor test can be used to determine the maximum dry density and optimum moisture content of a particular soil. A geotechnical engineer can also use the data from this test to create a specification block for a contractor placing and compacting a structural soil fill. This test will be conducted five times with each sample having a slightly different moisture content. Use a phase diagram to determine the correct amount of water to be added to the soil for each iteration. Step number one is to weigh the compaction mold without the collar. This is the compaction mold. To remove the collar, you loosen the two wing nuts at the top, rotate the top of the collar, and now at this point what we're going to do is we're going to weigh the mold with the base intact Make sure the mold and the base are clean, both on the inside and the outside. We want an empty weight of this. To do so, we're going to utilize the large scale. We're going to record that weight. And then we are going to record the weight of two empty tear cans with lids. Go ahead and remove the lids. Place the lids on the bottom and record those weights individually utilizing the small scale. Make sure you're recording the weights associated with the identified can number as written both on the can and on the lid. And keep those tracked collectively. We want to replace the collar back onto the mold. Make sure the collar is right side up. It should drop back onto the mold and the connection should be located directly under the wing nut. You want to make sure the wing nuts, all four wing nuts on the sides are finger tight. You don't want them any more tight than that. At this point, we're going to add a releasing agent to the mold itself. The releasing agent should be in a spray can on your desk. We're going to spray down into the mold. We want to spray this liberally. That is, we want to add a reasonable amount of spray to this. We don't want it dripping down the sides, but we do want to make sure we've fully coated the inside. To do so, you want to place the mold off to the side of your workstation, away from your face and your partner's face, and go ahead and spray that up well. The next step is to compact the soil provided. Your soil should be provided in a container such as this. We're going to compact it into the mold using the standard Proctor hammer. So at your station, you should have the standard Proctor hammer, which is a five and a half pound hammer, and the hammer has a drop height of 12 inches. The drop height occurs when the plunger on the hammer has been pulled up to the top, and we allow it to free fall down to compact the soil below. That's a 12 inch drop each time, but it has to be brought, the plunger has to be brought up to the very top to make sure we get the full 12 inch drop. What we're going to do is we're going to compact the soil using three lifts. It's critical we use three and only three lifts in this process. So three individual lifts of soil placed into the Proctor mold, and then the hammer utilized to compact each lift. The hammer is dropped 25 times on each lift of soil for a total of 75 drops of the 5.5 pound hammer. In between each layer, we want to scarify the soil using the blue sharp edge tool, that is if we compacted a layer, we're going to come in, we're going to scratch up the surface before we compact layer number two and layer number three. What that does is allows us to come up with a more homogeneous soil compaction rather than just a series of three different compacted layers. It allows those individual layers to connect with each other. I'm going to demonstrate the compaction on to the mold, of the soil in the mold rather, and um, I won't go through the entire process. We've got another one set up and ready to go, but you'll get an idea here pretty quickly. 
It's important that we place the mold on the floor. Do not attempt to compact your soil in the mold with the mold up on the table. Recommend you use the large spoon for placing the soil into the mold. For the first lift of soil, you need to place soil in the mold. Again, we're just placing it in there nice and loosely. Don't try to compact it with the spoon. I recommend your first lift be somewhere in the neighborhood of one-third to one-half of the way up from the bottom of the mold to the interface of the mold and the collar. You'll see a line in there between the mold and the collar. So that first lift should be roughly one-third to one-half of the way up from the bottom of the mold to the interface between the mold and the collar. It's all right to use your spoon to just smooth out the surface a little bit, flatten that out. And then you're going to grab the standard Crocker hammer. You want to start by placing the hammer on top of the soil. So it's just resting there. And again, one drop all the way up to the top and then allow it to free fall. That is one blow of the 5.5 hammer falling from a height of 12 inches onto the soil layer. We're going to continue that process. Each time, lift up the hammer, reset the hammer, working your way around the surface, continuously moving the hammer around. Again, making sure you pull the hammer up the full height, the full 12 inches. And we're going to continue this process until we've got to a point where we've done 25 drops. Again, after each drop, move the hammer around on the surface slightly. That way we're making sure we're compacting the soil in a uniform manner. Until we reach a total of 25 drops. Now I'm not keeping track, I'm just trying to demonstrate for you. I'm assuming we're at 25 drops. Place the hammer off to the side. Again, grab the blue sharp edge tool, and we want to use that to scratch up or scarify the surface at the top. So it will create some loose soil there right at the top, but more importantly it's making a rough edge, which will allow us to then compact the next layer in a manner that makes the entire mold a uniformly compacted soil. For the second layer of soil, second of three, I recommend that the second layer come up pretty close to that interface. I'd say within an inch to a half an inch of that interface between the mold and the upper collar. Again, you should be able to see that line on the inside. So the loose placed soil, three or four spoonfuls within an inch of that interface between the lower mold and the upper collar. Repeat the process using the standard Crocker hammer. 25 drops, working our way around, full height, allow it to fall freely, do not, do not hold on to the hammer as it drops down, you want to allow that to fall freely, to maximize the amount of energy that's being utilized to compact the soil. It's critical in this process that we are doing this in a manner that's very standardized, and we want to make sure that the amount of energy that goes into compacting the soil for each and every standard proctor test or modified proctor test conducted, the standard amount of energy for each of those individual tests is exactly the same. So again, 25 drops as we work our way around. The final layer, the third layer now, we want to make sure that the top of that third layer ends up above the interface of the bottom of the mold and the collar itself. In fact, we can bring it up almost to the top of the soil, or top of the mold rather, uh, as far as the third layer. Again, make sure we scarify between the second and third layer. Scratch that up. And three, four more spoonfuls. And again, you'll notice that the height of the soil now, relative to the top of the collar, it's probably within an inch of the top of the collar. 
Ultimately now, after I compact this third layer, what I want to do is make sure that the top of the compacted soil is above that collar and mold interface. It's got to be above the line. If it's not above the line, we need to remove the soil and start over in this process. So that third layer, after it's compacted, needs to be above the line associated with the interface between the collar and the mold. So at this point, we can assume that I've gone through and I've compacted all three layers. I'll move back over to the table now. I'm going to utilize a mold and a soil that's already been compacted completely using the 25 drops of the hammer on the three different layers. So at this point, what we want to do is to remove the collar from the mold. Again, earlier I said make sure you go finger tight on these. We don't want to over tighten them and make it difficult to remove. Should be able to loosen up those two top wing nuts. Give the collar a twist as we remove it. Twist it and pull up on the collar. Now you want to place this inside the large pan in your station. And what we want to do is we want to trim the soil so that it's just even with the top of the bottom section of the mold. Again, notice that this is a fully compacted three layers in this mold, and after removing the collar, the soil is sticking up above that collar to mold interface. If you've compacted your three layers and it's not above, again, we need to start over. Or if you're in the instance where you remove the collar and a portion of that soil breaks off, contact your lab technician or your instructor, and maybe we can help out, but we might have to rebuild that one as well. Now that we've got the collar removed, we want to go ahead and scrape off the soil from the top so that we've only got soil compacted in the lower mold. So to do so, I recommend to utilize the bar that will be located at your station. You'll notice the bar has a bit of a sharp edge on one side. That works very well to utilize to scrape across the top of the mold. I recommend you continuously move. Don't just try to scrape this in one, one big move. Uh, chances are you're going to end up extracting more soil than you intended. So slowly and nice and evenly work your way around, changing the direction that you're scraping this off with. And eventually you're going to feel the bar in contact with the top of the mold. That's a good indication we've taken down the soil level to where we want to. Again, make sure you approach it from various directions. And when we're no longer feeling any soil removed, we're simply scraping the bar across the top of the mold. We know we've taken it down to the level we want to. Now, if possible, we may create some sort of small void in the surface if perhaps there was a small piece of gravel or something in the soil, in which case it's acceptable to take a small amount of the soil and backfill that void, just finger push it in there. But that's only for, for voids probably over an eighth or a quarter of an inch in size. Now that we've trimmed the soil sample, we want to weigh the compacted soil in the mold. However, what we want to do is we want to know exactly how much soil is inside the mold, and I don't want to take into account all the soil that's on the outside of the mold. So we can use the brush to nicely brush off any soil that collected around the outside of the mold. Make sure you're brushing that into the pan, not onto the table or onto the floor. Make sure we get it all off there. Make sure there's nothing attached to the bottom of the mold either. And then we want to weigh, again, just the mold with the base and the soil. We want to place that onto the large scale to get a new weight. Now, we originally weighed the empty mold. We now have a weight of the mold with the compacted soil in there. If we know the total weight then of the soil that's compacted in there and we know the volume of the mold, the volume of the mold is 1 30th of a cubic foot, 1 30th of a cubic foot. Now we should be able to ultimately determine what is the unit weight of the soil, of the compacted soil, inside the mold. Next step is to utilize what's known as a pocket penetrometer. 
Not a particularly fancy tool, just a spring-operated tool. As you push on, you can feel the spring compressing. That spring has a known spring constant associated with it. We know the surface area associated with the end of the tool. And by place, pushing down on that, we can determine at what point does the tool start to sink into the soil. And then we can back calculate what was the required force to fail the soil at this point. Now, to read this unit, what we're going to do is we're going to push it into the soil up to the point when one of two possible things happens. You'll see a small groove on the end of the tool. So if it, the tool sinks into the soil up to that groove, we can stop. The other scenario, possible scenario, and it will likely happen because this is a particularly dry sample, you'll find that the dry samples max out the tool. That is, I can push the tool all the way down to the bottom, and it hasn't actually pushed the end of the tool into the soil because the soil is so dry. With the more moist samples, you will actually get a real reading. In this case, what I can say is that it has maxed out the tool. I believe the maximum reading on this tool is somewhere in the neighborhood of 5, 4.5 rather, tons per square foot. As I recall, the units on the side. Let me double check that. Yes, tons per square foot, 4.5 tons per square foot is the maximum reading on this. So the number you would write down associated with this particular soil is that it is greater than 4.5 tons per square foot. We can't say anything more specific than that. However, if we actually get to the second and third iterations of this process, and we now have a soil that has more moisture in it, it is likely the tool will push in, in which case now we want to read to the bottom of the red collar. So turn the unit upright. We're going to read the number that's at the bottom of the red collar. Notice this red collar slides as we continue to push downwards. The red collar slides, and then it holds in position when we remove the spring. We can actually read what is the specific value associated with penetrating the pocket penetrometer in the soil. We want to do this a total of three readings on the soil. Again, in this case, I get maximum values are maxed out greater than 4.5 tons per square foot with this particular dry soil. Get three different readings, record that reading. Now at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to empty the soil back in, into the pan from the mold. So to do so, we want to loosen up all the remaining wing nuts on the mold. We can remove the base of the mold. Make sure we knock any soil from the base down into the pan. We want to utilize all the soil from the sample. We don't want anything remaining on the mold. We want to make sure we clean this all up good before our next test. Loosen up all those wing nuts. And now if we sprayed this mold well enough, the soil sample should just push out of the mold. This one's been sitting for a couple of days. I have a feeling it's not going to come out. If you have a situation where the soil does not come out of the mold, just contact again your lab technician or your instructor, and we can try to extrude that for you using an instrument we've got in the room. That one's not going to come out because it's been sitting for so long. What I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate for you what we would do at this point if we were able to get the soil back out of the mold. I'm going to go back to the one I was compacting earlier and just pretend that was my sample. What we want to do at this point is remove all the soil from the mold. Again, you would already have your collar turned removed. You'd have all the soil trimmed off. This one I know will come out. But the intent is to get all the soil back into the pan. Chances are it's going to come out and it's going to have a pretty good compacted shape to it. You want to get that all back in the pan. Again, make sure you take the time to brush down the mold. Get all the soil out of the mold back into the pan. And likewise, get all the soil off the base. Check the bottom, make sure there's nothing hung on the base. And now that we've got it into the, into the pan, what we want to do is we want to break open 
that sample. With the well-compacted samples, it's likely you may have to use the tool we use to scarify those layers to physically break open the sample and get it open. What I'm going to do now is take a moisture sample using the two cans, the two tear cans with lids. We want to take two to three teaspoons of soil from the center of the mold. The center of the mold will provide us a representative moisture content for the overall sample. Place two to three teaspoons into the tear can, place the lid back on there. The lid at this point can be canted, assuming we get a measurement on the moisture content fairly quickly. Place the can with the lid in the soil sample back on a small scale. Record that weight, make sure it matches up with the number and letter associated with the individual tear can. And we want to do that for two samples for this particular compacted volume. Record your information. Now you can take your cans and again make sure the lid is canted to the side. You can place these in the location directed by your instructor or your lab technician. And these will be placed into the oven for 24 hours and dry weights will be emailed to you. Now with the remaining volume of soil in the pan, and at this point we can then break up the soil sample. This is similar to what you did in a prior lab, but what you want to do is use any of the tools available to you to break up that sample. Variety of tools. You can use the bar to go through and crush this sample up. We can use Mason's tool here. You want to make sure that you get all the soil sample in your pan scraped together and broke it up completely. Now, at this point, we're going to add some moisture to the sample and repeat the process. You'll be directed to add a specific volume of water to the sample by your instructor. That information will be provided at the start of the lab. There are a couple ways to add the water. The most important thing is that when the water is added, it gets mixed in well. An option is to simply measure out the volume of required water into the graduated cylinder, and then to slowly place the water on the sample. Another option is to measure out that volume, place the water into your squeeze bottle, and then use the squeeze bottle to slowly and evenly add the water to the soil. A third and final option is to simply record how much water is in your squeeze bottle to begin with. Know that the volume of water that we want to add can be converted into the grams of water we need to remove from that bottle and just simply continuously add water to the soil sample and then measure your weight associated with the squeeze bottle and stop when the appropriate number of grams of water, cubic centimeters of water, have been added to the soil. It is absolutely critical at this point that we make sure that the moisture is added and then evenly distributed throughout the entire soil sample. So as you're adding soil to this sample, or adding water rather, to this soil sample, Make sure it gets mixed in completely. Do not attempt to run through this process. This is a point in the proctor test that is critical to make sure that we get the water completely mixed in and evenly distributed throughout the sample. Take the time to compact the soil or to mix up the soil appropriately. After we've gone through, we've added the required amount of moisture. At this point, what we're going to do is to um, repeat the process. So we're going back now to step number one. So at this point, we're going to have the base and the mold itself. That will be assembled back together make sure those are completely clean. We don't want any soil in there from the prior test. And we're going to begin by weighing the compaction mold empty, utilizing the large scale. And we'll go through the remaining process. After each test, that is after each time we compact the soil, we break open the soil, we get our moisture content, we're going to add additional moisture, we're going to add an additional volume of water between each step. We're going to repeat this process of compacting the soil in the mold, weighing the mold after it's been scraped down, we're going to weigh that each time, we're going to repeat that process a total of five different times. This lab can be a time crunch, so I encourage you to work efficiently 
but also make sure you're working in a proper manner that makes sure that your soil is mixed completely. Total of five tests gives us five data points to put onto, the, onto our charts. That is the entire process, that's the entire procedure. Uh, before departing the lab, ensure that you've got all your data sheets filled in completely. Wash down the desk at your workstations. Sweep the floor in the immediate area around your workstation. And then check in, check in with your instructor before you leave. That's all for lab number three.